the message uh, that we're getting from the protesters here today. This is going to be, it's hoped, a peaceful protest. And speaking to people who are taking part, it's pretty clear that there is a huge strength of feeling. You can see behind me, we're at the start of the march. Uh, it hasn't quite set off yet from outside BBC New Broadcasting House, but there are already hundreds, if not thousands. In fact, we're expecting at least 10,000 people to turn out today in solidarity with the Palestinian people. Now, I have here with me Katie Colley. Um, you're a Jewish lady who has travelled down from Hastings to be here today. Just tell me why you felt like you needed to be here. What we're seeing today is what undoubtedly a genocide in Gaza. Um, I have friends in Gaza. This was given to me by my friend Raja, who is even now um, sheltering uh, with her five children without food or water as the bombs rain down on them night after night after night, not knowing if they're going to live through to the next morning. No civilized nation on earth would agree that depriving children of food and water is acceptable. I'm here because I'm a human being and anyone with a conscience believes that a civilian population should never be punished in this way. It's collective punishment, it's a war crime. And unless we stop it, unless we get out there and say something, it's going to end up with thousands losing their lives. Can you put into words how you feel about the loss of life on both sides? Every life is precious. But the root of this violence is the occupation. It's not complicated. It's a settler colonial state imposing apartheid and oppression on an indigenous people. And that's wrong everywhere for anybody. And it has to be true that all the Palestinians want is freedom. And we must support that in equal rights. And I stand up here, I'm so pleased to see so many of my uh, brothers and sisters with big hearts who know the truth. And the Western media has a duty now to tell the truth about what's happening because I am seeing the worst horrors I could ever have imagined. I grew up in the shadow of the Holocaust and we said never again and that means never again for anyone. And I beg of anyone, if they have a conscience, get out there and speak and demand your leaders speak. There seem to be, of course, deep divisions on either side, but you've come out today and you were telling me earlier that this is about being a human, a fellow human being. I'm so thrilled to, to be here among my brothers and sisters who can see the truth despite all the propaganda and the lies and the bias and the prejudice that we see in the Western media. It has been, quite frankly, a, a, an appalling week. What would you like to see the UK government do now? They must demand a ceasefire. They must demand that Israel stop bombing children and stop burying them under rubble. They must demand a humanitarian corridor so aid and medical supplies can get in. They must demand they have electricity. They must demand that there is food and water. This is, a, a, this is an emergency now, a crisis, and people must rise to it. Thank you so much for your time, Katie. Thank you. Um, so you heard there strong words from Katie. That's echoed across most of the people that we've spoken here today. There is a, a real sense that people want the UK government to step in, to really come out strong. They want to see humanitarian corridors here, but mostly what they want from the people we've spoken to today is for a peaceful protest. We've heard that, um, as you were saying before, about the police presence here. They are being very careful with the words that they are choosing. They're talking about being impartial. And it's a tricky balance being able to have a large police presence here, but also strike the balance between protecting um, the right to protest and freedom of speech, but also with a warning that any uh, anyone showing uh, toleration, any kind of terrorism won't be tolerated.